This must have been a challenging meeting. Herding and cultivating were very different ways of life. They both had to adapt. Below the huts, in the valley, was a community which was much larger and more prosperous. People came together in large communities. Extended families could work together. They were now secure and could plan for the future. Reliable grain and regular meat. there was a downside. People and animals were crammed together. They created hygiene problems and new diseases. The pressure was on to organize, to keep everything apart. They began to spread down the valleys of Jordan as the population increased. They had plenty of food. Now some people could be freed from the grind of farming. They developed their talents into specialized jobs. Knife makers collected special rose-colored flint for their finest blades. First potters learnt to make containers from clay which was dried in the sun. They created perhaps the earliest piece of complex technology ever devised. They designed the first looms, still found in villages today. Now it was time to move on. Once you've got the whole package, then population's beginning to take a real kick upwards. And then you need more territory. Between 8,000 and 7,000 years ago, colonizing farmers spread out from the Middle East through Turkey and into Southern Europe. Now, the farmers set out with some seeds, a few animals, and the idea of farming. found a vast continent. They faced the challenge of a new landscape and a new climate. The forest was impenetrable, so they moved up the major rivers. The hunter-gatherers living here never found grains which could be farmed. the shift to farming just hadn't been possible. The farmers brought the necessary animals and seeds to allow the Europeans to develop. They carried the idea of farming. At that time, Europeans were still living very simply. They farmed together and grew only what they needed. They believed much more in the value of the individual. They came as traders and stayed to farm, building their own characteristic villages. What's more, they brought the art of smelting to the north. They added a vital secret from the Middle Eastern trading routes. 
Mix some tin to copper and you get bronze. This process was so important, the smiths had the richest graves. They were probably clan chiefs. These leaders wore breastplates and decorative metal jewellery, again as symbols of their wealth. And they had another power symbol, the mounted horse. Horses were expensive to keep. A single horse eats more than a family. Only the elite could afford to keep them. They were developing a new kind of society with leaders and followers. The leaders dominated community life. And then, around 3,000 years ago, there was a dramatic increase in the use of metals. The smiths discovered iron, which swept Europe. It revolutionized farming with cheap, effective tools. And it gave rise to great Iron Age civilizations. It loosed the sword and the soldier on the world. All of this was made possible by the first farmers.